Hi guys, it's Jay Weston here from Hyperfocal Design. Today I'm going to bring you a much more technical how-to on how I'm putting together the time-lapse HDR skies. So if, uh, if you haven't heard of that um, yet, I'm developing a set of hemispherical time-lapse HDR skies which is going to be used for image-based lighting in 3D scenes. So you'll be able to take this, uh, this full 360 degree hemisphere of the sky, drop that into your 3D scene and, and light it with it. So the end and use will be um, you know, dramatic kind of passage of time, shots with moving clouds, and you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see the you know, clouds, clouds moving rapidly overhead and, and shadows moving along and um, should create quite a dramatic and sort of epic look. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what people come up with for that. So yeah, today uh, I'm gonna run you through how I've set up the camera here, um, why I've chosen the equipment I have, um, and all the, the settings on the promote control and the, and the Nikon. So the main camera body there is a Nikon D800E and the reason for this is because we're using a single frame to capture the whole sky we need uh, some pretty serious resolution and that this camera certainly provides that, it's about medium format. Um, so I chose the E, I mean I was I tossed up between the non-E and the E for ages and just ended up going with the E because I didn't really fear any more A patterns and um, I wanted the image sharpness so um, there's a Nikon and the Sigma 8mm fisheye to give us one frame for the entire sky so I've just lined that up and taken a test shot and made sure it's all in focus and that we're getting the whole sky and then my setup Here is f3.5 and the reason we're going for like a wide open aperture is uh, there's a couple of things. One, it reduces the amount of flickering you get. Uh, if you shoot wide open, essentially the, the diaphragm on the, uh, the shutter blades, it, it opens the same distance every time and you won't get any, any flickering, like different amounts of light coming into your scene. Um, and it also reduces it also greatly reduces the amount of lens flare you get from the sun, which is, is quite a big deal. You don't really want to have huge lens reflections and, and uh, stars from the streets coming off of the sun and, and stuff like that. So shooting wide open, um, just a manual focus, ISO 100, so we've got the minimum amount of uh, image grain. Um, and while the, the Sigma is focused on that's a meter away. Uh, you would think infinity would be a focus setting, but it's just uh, it's not. Um, I've done tests, and and that is the sharpest sharpest setting. And then here we have the promo control. So this is the promo, and in terms of cables here, um, normally I actually use this upside down on the camera because uh, the field of view is so wide on that that we're gonna capture the, the cables or even the, the unit itself. But yeah, it does slide on upside down, so I just set it up and then flip the thing upside down and it's not an issue. Um, so yeah, the cables. Um, this is just the USB, runs into the, into the camera there and that lets the promote control the camera like the shutter speed settings and, and all of that and then that one is the shutter cable which allows the camera to shoot at the full two and a half frame a second maximum um, so to actually set set ourselves up for a hdr time lapse just going to press the mode button here to go through all the different options. 
you can see all the different uh, things you can do with the promo here. It's pretty, pretty fancy. Um, so this is the to shoot the time lapse HDRs. You've got two different modes that you've got to set up. This is the HDR mode, and the one before was the time lapse mode. So in the HDR set up here I just try and keep things in focus we go yeah you can go up and down here to to change the fastest shutter speed so one eight thousandth of a second will get us like the disk of the sun with that ND filter um, and then this is how many steps between each image so it'll go from one eight thousandth to one two thousandth all the way on through to two seconds and you can see that uh, down the bottom there the sequence one eight thousand dot 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 two seconds and then we've got how many frames per set so if I move that up for example we'll go all the way up to eight seconds and then the time lapse setting there this is the time lapse number that's flashing there you set up in a different mode uh, right now it's so it'll take the whole sequence, wait five seconds and then take another shot. And then you've got mirror up and long exposure noise reduction options which I'm not fussed about. And yeah, here's the, the time lapse mode. So the exposure is set to HDR, which is the other mode that I was just in. Five second interval. Uh, I've set it to 2000 just so it'll just keep shooting until the memory card runs out um, and then it just starts instantly so you just whack the start button there and it'll it'll begin so you can see it running through the shots there so one two three four five And then it'll tell you, yeah, time left there and how many exposures left in the set. And then I think we just hold any button to cancel it. Or maybe the power button, yeah. So any other button abort. And uh, that's essentially how it goes. Um, I've been putting it, mounting it on the... Uh, 360 precision, precision head just there. Uh, obviously, it's uh, we're not shooting a we're not stitching a panorama together, but it's a good sturdy head and it allows me to shoot straight up. Um, and the only other thing I can really talk about in terms of hardware is the memory card, which is a 128 gig compact flash card. So that's the one I use there. It's uh, quite a good uh, balance between cost and, and speed. Uh, this uh, this allows, like the thousand X speed allows you to shoot pretty much constantly. Uh, I've tried shooting, um, I've tried shooting at full two and a half frame second with this setup with no frame delay at all. And it goes for kind of a few thousand frames without ever running into buffer issues and it's never missed a beat. So there you have it. Uh, once that's taken the full image of the of the sky and it's about to run out, I'll stick the grey card up in front of it again for a final white balance setting and then I'll use uh, LR time lapse in post to grade the white balance from the first shot all the way through to the last shot. And yeah, so the next one will, the next video will go into that, um, will go into the post processing workflow. Uh, so I'll be using things like Lightroom, LR time lapse, uh, PT, GUI, stuff like that. So I think that's about it. Thanks for watching and let me know if you've got any questions. 
check out my blog if you want to follow along in this making of and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Alright, cool. Thank you.